right today we are going to talk about ecg leads right and about before i go into detail of bipolar limb leads or unipolar limb leads or the chest leads right i want to tell you what exactly the word ecg lead means what is the meaning of ecg lead what is the real concept of ecg lead when we talk about ecg lead we have to learn it at three level ecg lead as a circuit ecg lead and its axis ecg lead and pattern derived derived from it right so let's start with it as we know that ecg lead is basically a set of electrode with the wires connected on one side with the ecg recording machine and other side electrodes are applied on the body surface and the purpose of those electrodes is to record the electrical activity of the heart as we know that uh, when there is heart is undergoing electrical activity like atrial depolarization and then ventricular depolarization and repolarization electrical vectors are produced is that right electrical electromotive forces are produced when heart is undergoing electrical events those electrical events of the heart those electrical events of the heart can be recorded by the ecg leads so let me tell you what is the meaning of lead right then we'll go into detail let's suppose here you are okay you are very happy because you are about to learn the real concept about the ECG here you are I'm not going to draw other organs now let's suppose here is your heart right I will just focus on major ventricular depolarization that when major part of the ventricle is undergoing depolarization the electrical current is moving downward and leftward if we talk about the frontal plane right why let me draw it here suppose this is left ventricle this is right ventricle this is interventricular septum right when depolar ventricular septum when ventricle is undergoing depolarization right in previous lectures i have explained into detail that first there is septal depolarization then there is major ventricular depolarization and after that there is basal part of the ventricle undergoing depolarization right now i will just focus that let's suppose ventricle major ventricular depolarization is going on when there is major ventricular depolarization going on ventricular cells undergo depolarization from endocardium to yes epicardium that wave of depolarization is spreading from inside to the outside of the ventricle and this movement of depolarization produces millions of vectors millions of electromotive forces right and these electrical vectors or electrical electromotive forces which are generated when the major ventricular depolarization is going on they, these forces can be represented by this vector which is showing the depolarization of right ventricle and can be presented by this vector which is showing the depolarization of the yes left. left ventricle and because right ventricle and left ventricle are undergoing depolarization simultaneously they are undergoing depolarization simultaneously so these two vectors can be added to each other and if we add these two vectors together the net vector will be as you know that uh, vector of left ventricular depolarization is more forceful as left ventricle is thicker and because it is thick right larger number of cells are undergoing depolarization so there is stronger vector produced by the left ventricular depolarization and relatively weaker vector is produced by right ventricular depolarization so when you add these two vectors together then we say there is mean vector right which is in frontal plane which is directed downward and leftward right what is this this is the mean this is the mean you can say qrs vector or we can say this is the mean electromotive force 
along with its magnitude, which is represented by the length of the vector, and its direction, which is presented by direction of the arrow. Right? This is mean electromotive force representing vector when major parts of the ventricles are undergoing depolarization, or we can call it mean QRS vectors, even though in previous lectures I told that initially there is septal depolarization which is rightward, is that right? Yes. And then major ventricular depolarization which is leftward and downward and then there is basal depolarization which is upward, right? But if we talk about only this vector, this is mean vector, mean vector means average of all those vectors at, at any moment. Mean does not mean cheap vector. Mean vector means that there are millions of the vectors when they are added together, right? We end up with the mean QRS vector. Is it clear? Now, let's suppose this is your heart and this is your mean vector which is representing, yes, major ventricular depolarization or now onward, I will call this vector QRS vector, right? Now, if we want to make a lead, now we come back. If we want to look at the electrical activity of this heart, right? And how to record these electrical activity? How to record these electrical activity? Before that, a little concept. As you know, body is a volume conductor. Body is a volume conductor. It has a lot of electrolytes and fluid. So it can conduct the, conduct the currents. If you don't believe it, put your finger in any plug and check it for yourself. Electric plug, don't do that anyway. So what I'm saying, our body, as it has a lot of fluid and electrolytes, it's a very good conductor of the current. So when this vector is moving, when this electrical vector is generated by the depolarization of the major part of ventricles, what happens? That this electrical current spreads all over the body. It spreads all over the body, around all fluids around the heart, and then it spreads into trunk and from the trunk this electrical current will spread into arms and legs is that right and this electrical current right which is generated by the electrical activity of the heart can be picked up from the surface of the body can be picked up from the surface of the body and recorded by ecg machine right now how to record it record it one way is that here is your ECG machine. Let's suppose this is your ECG machine. It's a very simple galvanometer I'm going to make it. A very simple galvanometer, right? And let's suppose that this is your needle, right? Here is a drop of ink. Here is ECG paper moving. Is that right? This paper is moving in this direction. Now, Let's suppose here is the positive electrode. What is this? Positive electrode, a positive terminal, and this is the negative terminal. And if we apply positive terminal here and negative terminal on this end, what will be we doing? We will be doing, we will we will be recording the electrical potential difference between the positive terminal and the negative terminal and this potential difference in these two points is being produced by the current depolarization currents or repolarization currents which are being generated by the cardiac electrical activity. I will repeat it, it's worth repeating. That when heart is undergoing electrical events, electrical vectors are being produced, these electrical uh, vectors or events are being conducted throughout the body. You can put electrode at any two points in the body, any two points in the body and when this current is flowing, it will be conducted in this area also. And these electrode will measure the difference of potential between these two electrode. If there is no electrical activity in the heart, Let's suppose, if there is no electrical activity in the heart, then nothing will be sensed by these two electrodes. And if there is electrical activity in the heart, 
that is conducted in the body then these two points will sense the potential at negative terminal suppose point A right and point B if there is electrical activity in the heart right that will be conducted in this area actually everywhere including this area here we have put negative electrode there we have put positive electrode and these two electrode will record the potential difference right between the electrical potential at point A and the point B that potential difference will basically lead to fluctuation of this needle is that right is it clear now actually what we have done by this circuit by putting a positive electrode right which is also called exploring electrode and other side we have put negative electrode and in some other ECG leads arrangement we put a reference electrode right which has zero potential but here we have put one positive electrode other negative electrode these two electrodes along with their wires along with their wires on one side one side attached with the electrocardiograph machine and other side electrodes are applied on the body surface and completing a circuit this circuit is called circuit of the lead right this circuit is called circuit of the lead so now another thing whatever electrical potential is present at this shoulder the same will be conducted in the arm is that right in the same way whatever electrical potential is present at this left shoulder same will be conducted in the left arm so <coughs> for convenience actually rather than applying these leads negative terminal on the shoulder just for convenience it's easier to apply on the wrist it is easy, easier to apply on the wrist and in the same way positive terminal rather than putting there we can apply our rest on the left side now we can say right arm has what negative terminal left left side left arm rest has positive terminal these two terminals along with their wires with the electrographic machine whole this system is called circuit of the lead right now this lead circuit actually how this lead is how this lead is recording the electrical activity or sensing the electrical activity this is the circuit right this is the circuit now I will give you an idea that let's suppose I put this lead system here right I put this lead system here this is your machine is that right here I put yes positive electrode is that right and there I put negative, negative. negative electrode and because these electrodes are making one positive pole other negative pole this lead should be having two poles so we will call it bipolar lead we call it bipolar, bipolar lead and because this is applied on the limbs this must be called bipolar limb leads this should be called bipolar limb leads now before I go into detail I want to give you some simple example to understand actually you can imagine that this vector okay I will make it red color this vector red color or let's suppose before I go into that now this is an imaginary line which we are drawing between the electrodes I mean we can draw here this is an imaginary line which we have drawn between the negative terminal and the positive terminal or negative electrode or the positive electrode now this line represents the yes it is not the circuit of the lead this line is axis of the lead electrical axis of the lead right so you know what is the circuit of lead and what is the 
electrical axis of the lead, right? Actually, let's suppose if I put this positive electrode remove from here, if I remove positive electrode from here and put the positive electrode here, then electrical axis will become different direction. So, electrical axis of the lead is determined by the placement of the electrodes on the body. Electrical axis of the lead are determined by the placement of the electrode in the body. Again, I will repeat. If I put a negative electrode here, positive electrode here, this is the axis of the lead. And this, these two electrodes with wire connected with the machine, this is the circuit of the lead. So there is circuit of the lead, there is the axis of the lead. Now, if we put negative electrode here and put positive electrode here or on the foot, now imaginary line which draws the negative pole and the positive pole, they are directed downward and leftward. Is that right? So axis of the lead have changed. So what is axis of the lead? Axis of a lead is an imaginary line drawn from the negative electrode or from the reference electrode towards the positive electrode which is also called exploring electrode. Is that right? So this is axis of the lead. Now, next concept which I want that you must be clear, what is the pattern of the lead? Let me explain this. 